Under City is no longer going to be Under City, as the Forsaken no longer plan to live in the sewers, so very likely we will be seeing a brand new capital built. The LRM could be returning back to the ground as it is right where it needs to be for the Void Invasion in Midnight, with Silver Moon being completely rebuilt from scratch, if the Amani Trolls become playable, we could be seeing Zulamar as an actual playable city. Alongside this, we could be seeing significant changes all over Azeroth from Stronger becoming playable, Gilneas actually being rebuilt with new models, goblins getting undermined, and finally, after all this time, gnomes actually reclaiming Gnomeregan and having a place to go home. So what cities will certainly get updated in the saga and what others are very highly likely to get a significant update. When you're in a gaming session and don't have time to make food, Factor 75, this video sponsor, is the perfect solution. It eliminates all the stress and prep time that you need as you get pre-prepared and ready to eat meals delivered right to your door, which makes it even faster than ordering takeout, and best of all, the food itself is actually nutritious and helps you reach your goals. I know myself how preparing food can be quite a chore when you're super busy and doing a million things, so Factor 75 comes in a clutch. Coolest thing is it fits your lifestyle so you can choose not only meal preference but you can specify how many meals you want per week with protein, calorie smart and a bunch of other options and it's flexible as well so you can modify food preferences and skip a week if needed. So get 50% off your first Factor 75 box and free wellness shots for life using my link meaning you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Just click my link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone and check out Factor 75. There's really not that much of a point in talking about the revamp of Azeroth anymore as it is essentially confirmed by this point and it is exactly as we had believed in the past. It won't be a cataclysm type destruction event that it will change the entire world overnight but instead we are going to get gradual changes to the old world and that makes complete sense as all three expansions of the World Soul Saga will be based in the old world on Azeroth. This will no doubt leave some areas definitely stuck in time but the critical areas of the expansions will without a doubt be changed. Most importantly, we will see an update to most of the northern and eastern kingdoms, the entire northern will be revamped and enlarged, and with Kazlagar, it is possible we could see some updates to the southern part of Kalimdor around the Sword of Sargeras, as the sword is obviously the focal point of the entire saga. However, the good news is that we are going to be getting these sort of localized revamp infusions over the years, and it is very likely that cities that might not even be related to the next three expansions settings will be revamped as patch content and there are nearly a dozen or so cities that we could be seeing updated throughout the next few years. You have definitely noticed this trend already happening as we had gotten Gilneas, other city, Bellamet, potentially even new Drena and Troll cities being updated in just the past few months. Although most of this was just a setup for what will happen in the future, only Bellamet really was actually a fully built new city with the models and everything. In the previous video I talked about how this trend of updating old cities with a really fast pace not only started but seems like it will significantly progress and this seems like a very likely setup for player housing like an actual advanced system we could be seeing soon. Blizzard has wanted to do it all these years and there seems to be a trend that every playable race will get their own city updated, revamped or half revamped and even if you guys don't really care about player housing or even want to play player housing, the reason why this is relevant is that this could give race capitals an actual purpose Purpose. While it would of course be cool to see every city updated, there really needs to be a point more than just a single quest line of symbolic rebuilding in order to like realistically allocate these resources. I mean, should I just look at the completely practical side of the game? Most players just use the relevant hub, sometimes they go to Storm and Orgimar, but other than this, almost every other city is just a complete ghost town. Well, having a system like player housing would make this actually work and would make all these cities actually relevant. However, some cities are definitely going to be a part of the next three expansions, so there will be justification enough, but let's look at what we will be getting over the next few years. So let's start with a really interesting one and one of the most iconic cities that will almost certainly be relevant in the next few years, and that is Dalaran. 
Now, most of you know Daladan as the big floating city that was in Northland that moved to the Broken Isles like this mobile hub, but there is so much more to this city than people think. Daladan is one of the original city-state kingdoms that split from the ancient Arati Empire and for most of their history they were right around Lordaeron as a really prosperous magical state and then through magic itself they had raised the city into the sky. Lore aside, seeing how iconic it is and how everyone that ever played WoW knows about Daladan and how this was a critical city during WoW's two very popular expansions, Wrath and Legion, it is almost certainly coming back. However, the two scenarios I could see could be very different depending on the expansion it comes in. If Daladan comes in the last Titan, we'll almost certainly get a nostalgia throwback to Wrath, which really, by the time this expansion gets released, it could be the 20th anniversary of Wrath. However, the more interesting scenario I would like to see is Daladan returning from the flying shenanigans and going back to base, getting back to the ground, and if there ever was a setup in all of WoW history for it to happen, it would be midnight. Together with Quarter Last, there is a very high probability that the surrounding areas will get updated as well, and with the Void Invasion, Daladan's original spot would really be the perfect location to help save Azeroth once again, so they would get the best justification to return to their original place. We could see Daladan expanded significantly and the city looking entirely different. Now, while we're here in the Northern Eastern Kingdoms, let's talk about the number one city that will get updated and everyone already knows by now, and that is Silver Moon. No need to really even speculate here, I mean we had an interview, essentially this entire area is getting built from scratch, which makes sense seeing how outdated every single part of Silvermoon is, so you can expect Silvermoon significantly enlarged, the dead scout to be immediately removed, the broken parts of Silvermoon to be fixed, and also potentially new damage we could be seeing from the incoming void invasion. Interesting enough, the void elves with Illyria are obviously going to be a major part of this expansion, they were actually supposed to get a capital city on their own back in the day, but it is likely this will now merge with Silvermoon and we're going to get like a void quarter in Silvermoon itself most likely. This is the confirmed talk but what a lot of people are missing right now is that we could very likely be getting a new city right next door and that is Zulaman being completely rebuilt and playable together with the Amani. Now of course I'm aware it could go either way it is possible Blizzard could just go the lame route just how they went with the Scarlets and just turn the Amani into some one dimensional cannon fodder villains however the Amani have the right to live in Quotalas just as much as the elves, and they're really not the bad guys they were painted out to be. With the recent Zandalari, Dark Spear Lord, Troll Lord, the possibility of Vulture returning, it is definitely possible we could be getting playable Amani in this expansion, and together with them, Zulaman is the capital, which could be something completely new. Also, remember, Zandalari in the past were the biggest villains, and now they are playable. As I said, this northern part of the eastern kingdoms is going to be like a revamp explosion, and there are a ton more cities that are going to be happening. As we know, our most recent revamp was Gilneas, although it wasn't actually a revamp at all, the only thing that changed was Gen's face, really. However, I think this is just a setup for Midnight. With NPCs returning, workers there, it is almost certain that the city will get revamped to modern standards after the war within. No one really expected that Blizzard was going to reconstruct the entire architecture of Gilneas for a small patch like 10.2.5 and a really quick questline, so this is definitely a long-term game. Another long-term game here is Under City that I no longer think will be Under City, but just a city. Forsaken Reclamation started in Shadowlands when the plague was removed and then continued now with the Scarlets, but the Scarlets weren't really important, they were just fodder here really to fuel the quest line. The big thing that the Forsaken did, they had removed the Sylvanas emblem and their Sylvanas Forsaken culture and they proclaimed that they are now Lordron. They got the Lordron emblem now and this was really just the start of the creation of a new undead Lordron. Because of that, they no longer are going to hide in the sewers of the ruins of the city and to live like rats, but instead they will almost certainly reconstruct the capital city with new architecture and this might be one of the most exciting changes we are going to see. We never really saw undead architecture that was not a military base or some assault point so seeing them build an entire new capital could be very exciting. I really don't see them going back to the sewers after all that just happened. Now another city that we will definitely see and this is something I've been talking about over and over again and that is Stromkar. This is the capital city of the ancient Arati Empire and with the new human kingdom related to Kazlagar, we are going to get old Arati lore, making them relevant for the entire saga. However, this city was literally updated in its entirety with all the assets back in BFA and it is stuck as an ongoing battlefield that lore-wise has not really been active for nearly a decade. In the books, this city was described 
map is a completely active city, so really, the only reason we're not seeing it playable is because Blizzard hasn't updated it yet, but this is going to be so easy to update as it has been completely rebuilt already with all the new models it is there, it just needs to become playable. The way I see it being active is in regards to that 8 human kingdom we just learned about that split from the Arati before the 7 we know and they are the mother kingdom of those Kazagal right humans. There is quite a bit of lore potential here to make them relevant and as we're talking about cities, I also think we're going to get the city of this undiscovered human kingdom as well. As I said, the light humans of the Vorberin are just an expedition that this 8 human kingdom sent and they're active on some undiscovered continent but really it is way too early right now to predict how this could be playing out. Now when it comes to all but confirmed cities, we're almost certainly going to get something from the goblins, reaching short stories that Blizzard revealed from the War Within reveals that Gazlow is going to be one of the main characters and he is apparently reviving a goblin city. While this could be a small story, I think it could very likely be Undermine, as even in BFA we learned that Undermine still exists, it is active, it wasn't destroyed by the volcano, it just kinda fell into ruin. Furthermore, Kizan and Undermine are literally right next door to Kazagar. Undermine is underground, very likely related to Azerite and Azeroth's world soul, so really all the prerequisites are there lore-wise to make it relevant and as Blizzard really started going crazy with this underground cave technology, I could totally see them building a city as we had never really seen Undermine, the closest we ever got to it was the Mother Load instance from BFA. Now recent 10.2.7 hints possibly hinted that the Draenei could be building a capital as well as something happening potentially with the trolls, it is super early to speculate accurately but we got a ton of Draenei models, it makes sense, I mean the Draenei have been living in a makeshift cap in the ruins of a spaceship and they have obviously by this point permanently settled on Azeroth so there really is no reason why they're not going to get something more than just a single camp. With the trolls it is a bit different as they already kind of have a home but it is also stuck in time so some updates could be happening there as well. In regards to Nomergan, we unfortunately don't have any information about it as it is way too early to really say anything with any sort of certainty. I can see gnomes being relevant together with the goblins or in the last item if the mechanos become relevant and really this is a city that is just stuck in time in an endless loop of fighting leper gnomes that shouldn't even exist by this point so I definitely think we should be getting some patch that will be the reclamation of Nomergan. Now in regards to the capitals, Orkaman and Stormwind, we don't really have any information. I'm not sure we will ever get a huge revamp to them, but they are really stuck in time and so many new cities look so much better than these two, even though these two places should be like the main cities of Azeroth. I think we could be seeing some localized changes over the years if some structural things happen with the Horde or with Rallion as the King of the Alliance. Thank you for watching, check out the new undiscovered human kingdom that you never knew about by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time!